early morning in America. Dawn of a new day in industry. For most of these people, today will be a little different. The difference is progress. This progress is changing the lives of people everywhere. Yesterday, it created a revolution in a middle western meadow. This is Brook Park, Ohio. These men are going to work in what was once farmland on the western edge of Cleveland. Now there are two new plants, a foundry and an engine plant, new in Cleveland and new in American industry. These men who work here are building new industrial careers in a manufacturing community of tomorrow. A community built of amazing new production techniques. Achievements that provide a new way of industrial life for the people who work here. factories equipped with incredibly complicated machines to lighten men's work. Machines that challenge man's ingenuity. Massive machines controlled by the push of a button. Intricate electrical nerve centers that simplify the entire manufacturing process. Endless flowing conveyor systems that feed hungry machines on a split-second schedule. From one end to the other, it is a complex, synchronized production pattern created and controlled by the men who work here. What they are building is the heart of an automobile destined for assembly plants in California, Georgia, Michigan, Massachusetts, or Missouri. A six-cylinder engine, power that will move men and materials along every road in America. Its manufacture is a dramatic example of industrial imagination at work. This is where it all begins, with sand. Not one grain of sand in the engine of your car, but without sand, you couldn't have an engine. It takes sand to make castings, and here it is, 56,000 tons. The seashore moved indoors. The men in the foundry never lay a hand on it. They just push a button, and tons of sand move on to the dryers and into the mixers. This sand gets deluxe treatment. The men here know how important it is. Men like Bonner Kutz, who lives in Berea. He's been mixing sand for a long, long time. Made a career of it. It takes skill and experience and just the right touch. They call this a muller. It works like a giant egg beater. Mixes the sand with oil and cereal moistens it just enough so it sticks together. This sand goes to the core room, 
hundreds of feet away from the mullers. They don't carry it over in a truck or a shovel. They blast it by compressed air through big pipes to the hoppers or storage bins on top of these core making machines. This one panel does all the work. It keeps dozens of huge hoppers filled all day long. When a hopper gets hungry for sand, it flashes an electronic message. A flick of a switch, and the hopper gets the sand it needs. These giant machines pack the sand into cores. Cores that give shape to the inside of a hollow casting. These machines are run by men like Stanley Locke. He lives in East Cleveland. Never ran a machine like this before. Trained him right here on the job. It's delicate precision work. Each core is accurate to three thousandths of an inch, yet they're fragile as sand castles. But they're on their way to the ovens where the heat bakes them hard as a bride's biscuit. After they come out of the ovens, the cores are assembled. Now accuracy and careful workmanship pay off. The pieces fit together like fingers going into a glove. They've planned it that way. Time now to bring the cores and the molds together. The complex forms of black and white sand are still confusing to the untrained eye. But these men know their business. Under their skilled hands, an engine block is beginning to take shape. Meanwhile, men in another part of the foundry are melting iron. They start in the storage bins with pig iron and scrap. That's Joe Uziel up in the crane. He feeds four big hoppers as carefully as a druggist filling a prescription. Just the right amount of this. Just the right amount of that. It's easy, if you know how. Then they add limestone and coke for flavor and feed it, tons at a time, to the cupolas, the melting furnaces. Up she goes to the top of the furnace. The next time you see it, it will be white hot molten iron. in front of the cupolas, another group of experts gets ready to take the hot metal for a ride. Every day they move hundreds of tons of molten iron, but they're careful with every ounce. You don't play around with this stuff. It takes brains, not brawn, to run this operation. And that's how it's set up. Now let it run. Easy, easy does it. This is Joe Mahalik, who knows how. He's got it all figured out so he doesn't spill a drop. You don't get a second chance. This metal has to be delivered while it's hot. And those moles are waiting. It's a short, smooth trip to the pouring ladles.
Now the men who do the pouring take over. The teamwork begins to pay off. A river of molten iron flows into the molds and the sand forces it into the shape of a motor block, a cylinder head, or other casting. Old-fashioned foundries usually looked like a grimy London fog moved indoors. Dark, gloomy places, full of blistering heat and dust and dirt. But you won't find that here. This is the most modern foundry in the world, and planned that way. There's a cafeteria, for instance, just a step from the job. Locker rooms, a place to clean up and change clothes where every man has his own locker. And showers where men can wash up at the end of the day. See those big pipes up there? This foundry is air conditioned. A complete change of air every 12 minutes, always at an even temperature. All the dust and dirt and slag are trapped and flushed into water running through a sluiceway. It winds around like an indoor creek for almost a mile, under the floor and up in the air. They just wash this dirt right out the door. They cart it away and the same water goes back to get some more. They've cut out the dirt and they've cut out the hard work too. Here's a job that used to be a backbreaker, shaking the hot castings out of the molds. Not anymore. You just push a button. The machine provides the muscle. It rains sand down below, and the red hot castings move outdoors to cool off. do the hard work in the cleaning room, too. They make the castings turn somersaults as they knock off sharp corners, grind down the jagged rough edges, clean and smooth and polish the castings till they're all ready for the engine plant. They're looking ahead around here. They're going to make eight-cylinder engines, too. Lots of new machinery coming in. Lots of new jobs. This is the first test block out of the mold. Here's Claude Jeter, manager of this plant, a foundryman for 25 years. He's seen a lot of changes, all for the better. And he's planning a lot more. There goes a load of six-cylinder castings on their way to the engine plant. Tractor trucks go back and forth all day, an endless chain that links the two plants together. These castings are going to get just what they deserve, the most modern treatment in America. Take this machine. They call it a brooch. Works like a carpenter's plane. It's 96 feet long has 1,344 tools in it. This one is run by Mike Kenderis. He's the job setter on this brooch. It's a big responsibility. 152 blocks go through every hour. See these buttons? They control the whole thing. Mike never has to touch a block. He used to run a small brooch in a Cleveland machine shop. It was heavy work, lifting the pieces in and out. This is a better job. Better pay, too, and a bigger responsibility. This is a new industrial science created in the 20th century. It's called automation. And it means letting the machines do all the hard work to save men for better jobs. 
These engine blocks are heavy. Each one weighs nearly 200 pounds. Yet they seem to glide along these intricate conveyors from one operation to another. They spin around and do all kinds of tricks with the greatest of ease. Men used to do this heavy work. Now the machines do it. It's a big change. Almost every part moves along these complex conveyors. A mechanical arm sets down a 73-pound crankshaft as gently as if it were a baby. Mechanical fingers twirl it around like a drum major's baton. A cylinder head twists and turns while pistons roll downhill and march along in military order. At first, it looks like the machines are doing it all alone. That's the automation. But get around the other side and you'll see the men. It takes men to keep these machines running. Men like Casmer DeLise. Machinists like Tom Petrock. Electronics men like Bill Anderson. Men who know hydraulics. Job setters. Electricians. Yes, it takes all kinds. Men with years of experience and young men just learning a trade. There's no end to the opportunities for them in new plants like these. They're not all in production work either. You'll see them in the powerhouse, on duty at the gates. They work in the metallurgy laboratory. They run complicated tests on metal and sand. They're on guard for quality, while a squad of safety men keeps an eye on every operation so no one gets hurt. Everybody plays a vital part. The doctor and the nurses in the hospital. The girls on the switchboard. The men in the employment office. Everyone. Some of these people have come a long way in a very short time. Men like Ed Garbus. His first job, unloading boxcars. Today, he's a general foreman. And men like Doug Rowe. A few years ago, he was an apprentice learning a trade. Today, he's manager of this engine plant. New ideas. New machines everywhere you look. They've even abolished the old-fashioned broom. See that cart? That's how they sweep the floors. Even their tool kits ride around on wheels. New ideas in final assembly. It's streamlined and suspended in midair. Everything's within easy reach. This mechanical arm is better than muscles any time. It carries an engine block nearly a mile and never even raises a sweat. Men never have to pick up an engine to turn it over. A simple twist of a crank and it tilts to any angle you want. Final assembly clicks along like clockwork. Now the parts have come together. It's an engine, ready to run. They test every engine that comes off the line. Start it up, give it a good workout. Now all the cold pieces of metal come to life. 
A few hours ago, this was iron, white hot, shapeless. The experience, knowledge, and skill of a great many men have changed it, shaped it, brought about this miracle in mass production. Some have specialized jobs, acquiring new skills. Others are doing the same thing over and over, day after day. There are still some repetitious jobs, but these represent a challenge to design a new machine create better jobs for the men. They're meeting this challenge in Cleveland. The revolution created by automation gains momentum every day behind the scenes of production. New machines are installed. Men are trained for better jobs. The opportunities exist. Take George Kozak. He lives in Cleveland, West 189th Street. Has a wife and two children. George is ambitious. He wants a career in industry. Now he's getting his first promotion. He's been selected for the foreman training program. He gets his training on the job and in the classroom. In six months, he'll be a foreman. Nearly 50% of the supervisors in these plants have been trained right here on the job, like George Kozak. There's opportunity for young men just beginning. In the apprentice training program, they can learn a trade, become skilled journeymen, experts in a profession of their choice. This is Ernest Pivato. He's grown up in Cleveland, married, has a young son. Ernest is training to be a toolmaker. He gets instruction in class and on the job. That's Angelo Cassari. He's in charge of the apprentice toolmakers. Ernest is halfway through his four-year course. When he completes it, he'll be a journeyman toolmaker. Jim Schmidlin is an apprentice electrician. It's puzzling to him right now, but he's learning fast. He's got his eye on the future, just like the others. Pattern makers, machinists, hydraulic repairmen. For all these skills are the trades of tomorrow, as well as today. These young men have a bright future in modern industry. For the men are the most important part of these plants. No matter how complex the machines, how miraculous their achievements, it takes men to run them and to keep them running, just as it took men to dream them up in the first place. The men who work here have acquired a new respect for themselves and their abilities. They're modern pioneers in American industry. What has been done here in Cleveland sets the pattern for future industrial progress. For more than an engine is being built here. This is a new way of industrial life. It is still early morning in America. Dawn of a new day in industry.